We have a lot of plants, and finding a spot for them can be difficult. In today's build, let's make a more elegant solution. Let me start off by saying that these stands can be used for much more than just plants. They can be used for speaker stands, award pedestals, and pretty much any other display. The name of the game here is optimizing space. So once I milled my boards down, I cut them to their final width of the table saw. For narrow cuts like this, I like using a feather board to hold my piece flat against the fence. This also helps to avoid getting any kickback from the saw blade. With my tenon pieces cut, I moved on to the tops and bottoms of the stands. I'm using a combination of maple and walnut to give the exposed tenon some contrast for this build. Once I had all my pieces ripped down, I swapped out my ripping blade for my crosscut blade for the remainder of the cuts. Then I set up a stop block on my crosscut sled and sliced out my chunks for the three different stand shapes. I'm making a circle, octagon, and a square shape with two rounded sides. And if you'd like plans for this project with full-scale templates, you can find them in the link in the description. You may notice these pieces have a few deep knots, but I think those give the piece some character, and I'll address those with some epoxy and black dye. So once all the pieces were cut, I used some total boat epoxy with a fast hardener to fill in the voids. I added two drops of black dye to the mix to darken the appearance of the epoxy. While the epoxy cured, I made a few templates to help set up and shape my final pieces. I like to do this for most of my projects, and it really does help remove a lot of the guesswork. I used spray adhesive to attach the paper template to my plywood and rough cut the curves out at the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw will work just fine. And if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps me to reach more viewers like you. The final shaping for the template is done at the disc sander, but a sanding block would also work. With the template finished, I used double stick tape to attach it to my wood slice. Then, at the router table, I used a flush trim bit to cut in the curve. Do take care when cutting at the ends of the template, as tear out and kickback can occur. Once the epoxy was fully cured, I removed the tuck tape and sanded the epoxy back to being flush with the face. Make sure that whenever you're sanding epoxy to use good dust collection in a mask. Epoxy dust is terrible for your lungs, so do your best to minimize it. And if you like plant-related projects, check out my propagation station build linked in the card above. Next I use a center finder to mark the middle of my workpiece. Then I drilled a small pilot hole to hold the workpiece in place in my circle cutting jig. Back at the bandsaw, I attached the workpiece to my jig and cut the circle. You can also use a router jig or a jigsaw to achieve the same result. If you use a jigsaw, clean up the circle with a sanding block. And if you want to see these projects as they progress, follow me on Instagram at Timber Biscuit Woodwork. Next, I started on the octagon. Once I had my template traced out on the workpiece, I used a miter gauge and a stop to cut the first two angles. I cut outside my mark on the remaining two angles and then slowly snuck up to the line. I will note here that you should take your time and try not to lose your position on the miter gauge. The underside of a few of my pieces still had a few cracks remaining, so I filled those in using Starbond's black CA glue. To cut the through mortises, I installed a dado stack at the table saw. Then using my templates to set up a stop block, I test cut the template before making the cuts into my work pieces. Each of these cuts requires some setup, but once you have the stop block in place, the cuts are pretty straightforward. With those cuts done, I then marked the cuts for the circle. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for your support. Then the circles were cut in the same way as the other pieces. The main difference was the height of the cut. I also stuck the two circles together to cut both of them in a single pass to ensure the cut stayed aligned. 
I next cut the tenon pieces to their final dimension and used a marking gauge to set the tenon length. I did a few test cuts, then cut the tenons out at the table saw. I cut one side first, then flipped the workpiece and cut the other. This ensures the tenon is centered on the workpiece. I repeated this process on each piece until I reached my desired length, which was just proud of the top and base. For the circle, I turned my pieces so the face was flat against the saw table and followed the same process. Before I glued the pieces together, I masked off the inner joint to help with any glue squeeze out. Cleaning these up later could be tricky. Then I glued and clamped the pieces together. The exposed tenon material could then be flushed up with a chisel. To ease the edges around the top of the faces, I used a rasp. This also adds a nice edge profile to the finished piece. Then I added my mark. To finish the stands, I used a penetrating oil. This brings up the wood's natural color and adds some protection to the piece. If you're looking to purchase any of the items or tools you've seen in this video, I will have links in the description. Full disclosure, I do get a few pennies if you buy, but I would never recommend anything that I don't use myself. These stands turned out wonderfully. The exposed tenon joinery really shines as the hero for the piece, and the fun shapes add a ton of character. Plans for this build are available in the description, and if you like this build, check out some of my other projects. I make new videos all the time, so if you think I've earned it, please subscribe. I'll see you next time.